All right, folks, what you've been waiting for is the barbershop, is the BF barbershop with the guys, with the three headed monster at BF, my man P Money to my side. And I got the IG God, the IG master. That's my guy, B Ray, Bobby Ray, Bobby B's in the building. So, folks, this has been a podcast in the making. We've been talking about this for years. Years. And he officially said, you know what? Fuck it. Let's go. Let's put it in here. And let's really talk about how this game went down and each of our feelings at each point, at whatever point in the game. And I'm going to tell you right now, man, it's raw. It's real. We're going to joke. You know what I'm saying? We're going to get angry, and we probably we might even fight with each other in this, but you'll never know what's going on in the barbershop because it's the barbershop. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Buffalo Fanatics Barbershop. Let's roll. That's Bobby's team, man. That's Bobby's team. Bobby keeps riding for this team. Talk about, yo, there's Super Bowl the bound. What the fuck is going on? <laughs> he keeps talking about how this team is Super Bowl bound, man. That's your team, Bobby. That's your team, bro. Can you believe that shit? No, that was big, man. You know what I believe? That fucking microphone you're talking right now? It's crisp. It's clean. Hey, right? Does it sound, sound good? Sounds okay. sound nice, boy. Like, how did we lose that game? Now, Rico, I heard you a little bit. Yo, huge shout out to you, man, post game. On the week one post game, is always the toughest week, especially after a loss. It, it's like a, we were talking about the other day. You can't go 0 and 1. The 0 and 1 just hits. Way different. Lose any other game. Just not the first. First game was rough, bro. Like, and it's it's just the way we lost it, bro. Like, if it was like a shootout, I right, you can you can kind of uh, have a moral victory in that. You know what I'm saying? We lost, but it was a shootout. Kind of like the Chargers. All right, it was a shootout. We lost, but we know we could put some points on the board. You can't lose like this. I don't know what's worse. The Bengals losing the way they lost, just getting blown out, or this loss. I think this loss is worse because it's Aaron Rodgers wasn't even playing. Now I got something to say about Aaron Rodgers. That's a whole other thing. But Aaron Rodgers wasn't even playing, and we 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 did this on on while everybody's watching. Yeah. And already and already Josh Allen was already under scrutiny, and for and not really any reason for it, because he had a pretty damn good year last year. But he was already under all the scrutiny, and then you do this, it's gonna give all the Josh haters so much ammunition. Bobby said it the other day. If <laughs> actually, ironically, it's hilarious. If Josh Allen had the game that Joe Burrow had. The, the yeah, those <laughs> Bills media hate would be all over it. And Bobby got mad traction on this. I don't know what Bobby's gonna say now. I need I need to hear the OG triple OG IG boss man right here. What is yo? I don't know how to compute this, man. I mean, it's tough. But obviously, first, Aaron Rodgers. Yo, a oh. couple of snaps and see. Imagine that happening to Josh Allen. <laughs> but it's it's something yeah, that we'll nah, talk man. about is the football gods will not allow you to build a super team. It might be a little too soon to say this, but <laughs> it, yo, it, and Bobby's been saying that too. Yo, I they mean, do not we allow you to build nothing, a super. That was big. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, that's crazy. Well, wait, how, why can't we build it? Why why won't the <laughs> why can't teams build a super team? Why can't they just let let, let that live? It, it does not happen. It's the same thing with the Dolphins. Jalen Ramsey got hurt. So anyway, Rodgers leaves the game. Zach Wilson comes in. I know, I know y'all are thinking, oh my God, we got this game. <laughs> I know you thought that. <laughs> it was a game. Allen. Being Allen. It's what's literally mean? Allen being Allen, man, just like you Yeah, said, but what's right? that mean, though? Allen being Allen. Because Allen being Allen to us was like, put the team on your back, will us back to victory, clutch. I mean, that's the Allen that we're accustomed to, right? Like, you know what I mean? Like, put it on his back and he's got you. So, w- was this an Allen that we can expect? Yeah, but I think it's, it's more here? so, I think it's more so just the Allen always trying to go for the kill right and, and like i said you know more times than not it works out but it's like you know at times it is not necessary it's just not necessary like when we need it and you mess up it's fine i'll give you a pass for that right we needed to make a play you try to make a play and it didn't work out but it seemed like all day yesterday 
or last night. It was just not necessary, man. Because I don't know about you guys. I was actually a fan of, of the script that we were running, of the game plan. I was a fan of it, right? Because we know whenever you're playing the Jets, that they have almost like the perfect defense, right? Where you have the you have the front four who can dominate, and then you have the seven and pass and pass coverage. Like it's extremely hard to you know, make plays on that, right? So you kind of have to dink and dunk it to kind of, you know, bring the DBs and the linebackers back up again. But, it, it, man, I, it was tough to watch, man, because it, it was like like what we were doing was working. And then Jimmy Scott Green. Like, you know what? You know what pisses me off? I, I, you know what pisses me off? is Bills fans like Pierre that pissed me off. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to get right into your ass right now, bro. All the optimism. Like why? Why? Why give? Why feed Bills fans this optimism that we're gonna be this and we're gonna be that? Just call it what it is. You yeah, but why? Damn well, in your heart, we were gonna lose this game. Stop with the cap. There's you know, no way in hell. There's no Rico. There's no way in hell you watch that game and say, "Oh, we're gonna lose this game." With Rogers or without? It doesn't matter. Listen, at the end of the day, Rico, we're Bills fans, right? We're actual Bills fans. So why am I gonna sit here knowing that? We have a pretty amazing team when we're on. We both know this. We're actually one of the top two teams in the league. So why am I going to take a top two team that, in my mind, they got better and say that, oh, another team's going to beat us? It doesn't make sense to me to sit there and be like, oh, yeah, I'm going to be defeated going into the season? Come on. We're supposed to be hot going into the season. What the hell are we doing here? We're fans. We're not trying to be a fan of the damn team. We're an actual fan of the damn team. Now, although I, I get where you're coming from, I still, I'm still i still going to call your ass out because I don't believe it. Let me go to the voice of reason here because you and I always go back. I need Bobby to keep it 100. Bobby, did you feel yeah, that we were going to win? Always the does. <laughs> did you feel we were going to win that game? Honestly, man. Yeah, absolutely. And you, you want a take like that? Let me give you this. End of, let me pull it up real quick. End of the third quarter. Josh Ann, efficient, 22 of 28. 22 of 28 at the end of the third quarter. The first pick, that was a punt. You give him that pick. He tried to, he went, took that shot. Play. I'm not going to give him the pick, but I, I agree. I agree. I agree with that kind of too. I mean, it was stupid into double coverage, but it was a punt. Give him that. Okay. The second pick, oh my God, shitty, shitty route by Gabe Davis. This motherfucker is not a wide receiver too. He's done. Yo, Gabe Davis Yo. is done the way that Terrell Bernard is done. Both of them are gone. That's two interceptions. At the end of the third quarter, Josh Allen, two interceptions that really don't, that I really don't care about. And he's playing efficient, 22 of 28 against a top five defense. 22 of 28? Heading and like I court. said, it was working. The offense, even though it was boring, it looked boring. It's like, okay, we're just going to, you know, who was it, the Packers coach? You know, we're just going to, you know, matriculate down the field, boys. Like, you know what I mean? It's just, we're just going to take what the defense has given us over and over and over again. But let's talk about that pick real quick, Bobby, because I actually had a um a picture. I know I know for the audio people, they're probably like, look, I can't see it. But look, this right here is what I'm talking about. It's third and eight. Josh rolls to the left. You see it right here. There's about 12 yards and no one's in front. You already know Josh gets that first down 10 out of 10 times. Why take that risk? Like, why go for the kill there? It was unnecessary. Just go ahead and run for the first down, and let's try to see what's going on, right? That's that right there, even though, yes, it was a punt, but it was an unnecessary move. It was unnecessary, in my opinion. What y'all think? No, I totally agree. I mean, I would like to see, like, a better picture to see exactly what's out in front there, but mm -hmm. totally agree. I mean, why why take that shot 
into obvious double coverage. It wasn't even like, how did he not see double coverage? That interception is is, is cool and all, and I and I see the still frame for those that are, are watching on audio form. What uh, what Pierce tried to break down here is obviously that that uh, Deontay Hardy attempt into double coverage to a five eight five seven receiver. That's another thing that don't make no damn sense. It was arm punt. Yep. <laughs> you feel me? So, um, but like Bobby said, we don't see the full frame. You don't know what's coming at him. We don't know. Like, I mean, you have to see the whole. Yeah, but I'm looking at it like this though. As uh-huh. soon as he broke it, I felt, oh, okay, there's gonna be a run. I instantly said a run. So in my mind, you run this. That's an easy first down. We're getting that with cheese. <laughs> Yo, so it's like that's you know, that. I see what y'all saying as far as you know what I mean for the throw to, but in my mind, dog, I ain't throwing to nobody. I'm running this one. It's third and eight. Let's roll. That's that. Am, am, I, am I gonna be? Am I gonna be considered a hater when I bring this up? I think Bobby knows where I'm going with this. Because he knows where I'm at. <laughs> Am I going to be considered a hater and say, yo, we don't have an RB1? I don't yeah, know. You a hater. Yeah. Oh, my God. Who wouldn't say that this way, Bobby? <laughs> you hating. No well, doubt. Hear me out. Hear me out, though. It's fourth quarter. Right? Forget about what James Cook was giving us in this game. Obviously, we're going up against a tough defense. I get that part. I'm not going I got. I'm not going to dismiss that part. But in what world... Have you ever seen a team with a, uh, an air quote RB1 on their squad and in the fourth quarter when it matters the most to have your best players on the field, they put in the third string running back, 32, 33-year-old Latavius Murray. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? You know what that tells me? There's no trust. You want reliable people on the field that can a catch the ball out of field, which we know James Cook can do. But if I need you to get the yeah, tough yardage, took, we're going to do it. That's what they were doing in the fourth quarter. You saw that. What was Latavius Murray doing in the game? Tell me, what was he doing in the game? Was James Cook hurt? No. What was he doing in the game? Oh, crickets. That's what I thought. Something's what up. What happened man. to Harris? What happened to Harris? What happened to Harris? We went from one to three. Why three? So what it. Is Murray going to start next week? Is that your point? Like, not, I mean, I that's not my point. My point is, what? Why? He's a bona fide number one. What are you? What are you taking him out of the game for? Keep him in the game. He creates mismatches. Hey, Bobby, he that's has something question. on Cook, man. I'll tell you, he does. Man. <laughs> we you don't want something on. Cook? That's a good question. We don't know. We don't know why he got taken out. I'll tell you why we have something on Cook because Cook was going up against the guy that I wanted in Brees Hall, and Brees Hall was absolutely a dog he did, yesterday. He did, man. Yo, listen, listen. The Brees Hall Brees, though, made it all like, make sense for me. We took Tyre Elam over Brees Hall, and then Brees Hall was like, "Y'all want to do that? All right, let me show you what's good." Off a of, off a of torn back off of a torn ACL, and then we got a healthy RB RB one in our backfield, and he's off in the fourth quarter doing God knows what. Y'all can have the mic. He was all for a series. He's all for a series. Now, but listen, as far as Brees, man, hey, he had he had two nice runs, maybe three out of the what, you know, the nine or twelve that he had. So, I mean, listen, you gotta give it to him, man. He takes advantage of the opportunities he gets. It, it seems like every single time. I mean, he did it all last year as a rookie. I mean, it is what it is, but as far as Cook, I wouldn't sit there and look at how Cook played. And be like, yeah, I don't like that. I thought he played well, man. And and I don't know what it is, but it seems as if you know Cook was balling in in preseason, in training camp, and pra- I'm guessing because they were feeding his ass yesterday, like heavy, heavy, heavy. Actually, no, they weren't. He had, he had the same amount of carries that Devin Singletary would have had in the game. No, no, I'm talking about this overall touches. He had, what, like like 16 touches. And did he, he had a whole he, record targets in general. Did he do enough for you to say, you know what, we got something special? Or is just a good back? He did enough, though. He did enough. For, yo, again, I like how you went and started off by saying, yes, the Jets are a good defense, but no, no, no. The Jets are a great defense. Baby. They are. You got to put that to, at the forefront and understand that, though, no, it would have been hard for any running back to really, really hook on the damn Jets' historic defense. 
You see what I'm saying? So it's like, wait a minute now. For what Cook did and the context of what the hell, you know, was going on, I think it was solid in my opinion. It was a solid week one for, because again, he never looked like he wasn't able to make a play. It wasn't like, okay, you know, like when he got tackled, he was one of those, all right, you know, it's, I get that one. You see what I'm saying? But, I mean, he made some plays out there, man. Like, he showed I mean, his speed, right? On one of the carries, I mean, he showed that he can get tough yards. Mm-hmm. Y'all remember that carry? Like, he was he was banging. Look at Rico. Look at Rico's face. <laughs> oh, my. And, this is your, and you guys are not believing what you're saying. You're not believing what you're saying. No, but it's just like, okay, what didn't he do? What didn't he do that you're like, yo, I, I can't see this. What didn't he do? Tough yardage. I'll tell you. Okay, you know what? I just said that he did. Uh, because I guess I'm just sounding like I'm like I'm I'm bitter. But you, big fella, I'm not. You want to get your boy? No, that's no, why. I'm not. Just check this out, man. You you want my running back? What I want my running back to do is is not off the first. You go down. Like there was a there was a there was a point where he went towards the sideline, and there was an opportunity from getting the first down. A little more weight behind your your ability to get down. He wanted no part of contact. He curdled and turned his back, and he didn't get the first down that we needed. That it's running back one on one. You see that those that one yard you need. You need that. Don't give me this. Turn your back, man. Put your put your head down and get those yardage. And those the small things like that is what kills me. It just kills me. And that's why I'm gonna stick to it. By week six, week seven, we're gonna see a. A shift, a split in Damon Harris getting more touches or just the same touches as James Cook. And I like James Cook. I, I like what he did this offseason. No, don't come okay. on and say that, big fella. No, I ain't gonna say all that shit. Man. Say, oh, oh, I like James Cook. No, you and, don't and, 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 and fuck Bobby's boy, because I know James Cook, he's in, Bobby's a freaking Florida guy. And everything, anything Florida, he's loving it. Man, bump all that bullshit, man. Sometimes you just guys, you guys just gotta call it what it is. That's why I'm glad I'm one of the Bills fans that will keep a fuck with everybody. Not everybody is is in rose colored glasses. Man. It's not about being rose colored glasses. Yes, it is. It's it's in like all that. of the context. Now, I'm, I'm about to put. See what you do is category too. You Bobby get emotional when it comes down to these damn takes, Pierre. Right? It's he gets emotional when it comes down to one of these takes, Bobby. It's one of them things where he's like, he gets married to a take and he just won't leave it for nothing, right? And Cook is that one. Cook is that guy. It doesn't matter what Cook does. It's what he didn't do. Is what Rico's going to exploit every damn week. You see what I'm saying? It's not what he does. A crucial third down, crucial that he got. I didn't think he was going to get it. I was like, oh, he got that. Nice. That was crucial. So it's like yeah. he made plays. It's just he didn't make the plays that Rico wanted him to make. Get the hell up out of here, boy. Come on now. That's, that's exactly it. I mean, Rico is like... You're going to see what you want to see. That's Rico. <laughs> He's going to see what he wants to see. I saw Cook get tough yardage. I saw Cook for a quick little second, though. I saw Cook in pass pro knocking motherfuckers off their cleats. Hey, speak on it, Bobby. Crickets. <laughs> I, I would say this, though. I would say this. I'm not, I'm not, listen, I think he's a good back. He's a good back. But I think, I think we, we overhype what James Cook really is because we didn't have such a dynamic back. We haven't had a dynamic back since LaShawn Le McCoy. That's the last time we had a dynamic back at, back there. And yeah. we haven't had one since. And they're trying to mold him into like, okay, he's going to be the dynamic back that he was a back in college. This is the NFL, baby. It's a little different. Now, right. he ain't no scrub. That's for sure. He's just a good back. He's a good back. And if you want to tell me he's an impactful back, I'm not gonna give that to y'all. I just can't. I won't do it. I mean, and you're not gonna. You're not gonna try to know. force me into thinking that. I don't think we know. You know, just just yet though. Oh, we right? do. I, mean, I know. I'll tell you that right now. He ain't no impactful back. Period. You want an impactful back? Hey, but fellas, fellas, you're talking about James Cook. But the real issue here, I think, is Dorsey and the play calling. <clears throat> y'all see these little stupid, uh, these little sprint runs out of uh, shotgun. Hey, that shit is retarded. It does not work. Especially when you're going up against the defensive tackles. Every single one of those, Quentin Williams was eaten. 
amazing. And they, they did that at least like four times, four or five times they ran that. At least, yeah. I got to watch I, the tape again on that because I originally thought it was like a, it, it did look, it looks weird how they run it. Like the, the guards pull, it almost looks like a trap. And that's exactly what happened in overtime on the second and 15. Yeah. That shit didn't work all day. And then they run that shit at a crucial moment. It's on what was it, second and long? Yeah. Yeah. Blown up. Second. Or actually didn't really get blown. What do you gain? Like three yards? But still Minimal. stupid. Who ran yeah, so, I mean, that play? Who was that? That was that you know, running back at that on that play. I think it was Cook. Mm. I think it was Latavius Murray. In overtime? Was, in overtime. overtime. I think it was Latavius Murray. I gotta go back. I could be I could be wrong, but the the play is garbage in the first place. Why, as a de- offensive coordinator, would you would you have Josh roll to his opposite side, to the left, and have to? He didn't have a chance to square his body up, and Diggs was running just a, a, a pretty much a quick comeback, like what he did to DJ Reed the first time. Came back. DJ Reed was a little smarter, played a little better, but still there was separation from Diggs and Reed, and an inaccurate pass from Josh Allen. Third and ten goes to fourth and ten. We got a punt. And a game over. What a way to to end the game where a shitty ass play call to the left. Why wouldn't you go make Josh Allen go to the right? Where if he can't find yeah, it, but it, it probably was, it probably was the position on the field. I mean, who knows? I mean, he made that play a couple you, times. You, he made that play to Knox. So would you I mean, best position. That's not the best position. It was an inaccurate throw because he's he wasn't he didn't have time to contort his body and, and get it. Straight. But dog, you have to yes and. You have to make that throw, though. You're damn near the, the best quarterback in the league. You got to make that throw regardless if you're going left or right. You can't just give it always. It was a bad play call because yeah, the guy didn't execute. It wasn't a great play exactly. call. He also didn't execute. Don't get me wrong. He also was, it was just wide. And he was there, man. Diggs was right there. You bring that little more accurate. He's catching that. It's a first down, and we get True. the sticks moving. But True. that play call, man. But the, Bobby's on it, man. The, the play calling was just was odd. There were times we were just, we just, it's like we gave up a down just for no reason. Like, what the hell was that? Oh, gosh, man. I just think, I think that Josh, I think he was seeing ghosts, man. Because, look, there was a play right here that I'm showing right here. It was a play in the third quarter. It was second and six. You see him, he's breaking the pocket right now. He does not trust the O-line. And there was no reason for him to leave this pocket. And he threw the ball away. It was the one where you scrambled and then he just tossed it out of bounds. It's yes, like, I remember. I know exactly what you're talking about. I you know, know what I mean? It was like, yo, Josh, like, relax. It seemed like the Jets are in his head because even the post game, I wasn't a fan of what he said post game. He's what like, he same shit, same place. It's like, dog, you're making it seem like the Jets are your daddy, big fella. But it's mm-hmm. looking like it is. Like, what mm. the heck is going on with Josh Allen and these Jets? Listen, man, Robert Sile remembers the day. When Josh and the Bills went to San Francisco and he lit them up in San Fran. Lit them up. I don't know if you remember that game, but he lit them up in San Fran. It was that he made, he made a beautiful plat pass where Fred Warner was up there just was trying to bat the ball down and Josh made a beautiful touch throw right across. Robert Sally remembers that. And then Robert Sally comes to the Jets and then we do what we do to the Jets. And now Robert's like, yo, I'm on to your ass. Here's where Robert, listen, I don't want to transition a little too too much, but we got to because I got to talk about this. Yeah, come on. With, because we brought up Josh Allen. Jo- they knew exactly what, they know what Josh Allen wants to do. I've made this analogy before. Josh Allen is a pop bottle, right? And you could shake, take a two liter bottle of pop, and shake that shit, shake that bitch and put it down. You could be eager and open the bottle of pop and, and pour your drink because you want that bottle of pop so bad and you're just thirsty. Or you can let the, you can let it fizzle down and at the right time you can open that bottle of pop. Josh Allen won that bottle pop right off the bat. He was just eager to open that bottle pop. And Robert Sally knew that shit. He's like, yo, take it. Take a drink. Take a drink. I dare you to take a drink. And guess what? He threw that stupid punt, punt pass, you guys want to call it, to Deontay Hardy. And I'm, I bring this up because all it was working. Like Bobby said, 22 for 28. I didn't even know that was a statistic. 22 for 28 for crying out loud. It was working. Dink and dunk. It's going to be a long, methodical game. It's okay. Just get the dub. Just take what they're giving you. And the Jets were like, I dare you. You'll take that shot. I want you to. And DJ Reek was like, three picks. 
Thank you, sir. Come on, man. Like, Josh, they know what you want to do. You got a cannon for an army. You want to use that shit. You, I mean, what I was saying right there, Rico, because you make an amazing point, man. Oh, man. It's like a lot of times we want to blame the OC, and I understand why I get it, right? You can always call a better play, 100%. But it's like it comes down to the quarterback pulling the trigger. I gave you all the first one, right? He could have ran that first down easy. Here's the second interception. Everyone kind of cleared out. He was looking at, at the top of the screen. You can't really see it. But it's second and 12. It's third quarter. Just go ahead and give it to Cook right, right quick. It'll be third and seven, third and eight. And let's live for another play. Instead, he tries to go for the kill. This was the pick the digs or the one that was going to dig. Oh, right? that's right. Yep. Right? Uh -huh. And then um, right? And then on the third one. Look, it's third and two. Mm. Big fella. Just hit him. Tripping. Hit digs, right? Hit. Now, here's the crazy thing. On this one play, because I, I was looking at Kincaid at the top of the screen. And he's open too. You had I remember guys, Kincaid was open. Yeah. Right? And I was like, yo, he wants to go to Gabe right there. And now he's hit that many a time. But in this situation, it was not necessary. That's why I'm like, big fella, this is on you. Like, everything was working. The game plan was working to a T. Let's dink and dunk it. Let's dink and dunk it. And let's dink and dunk it a little bit more. And we'll fucking leave out here with a win. We're playing the historic Jets, right? So let's get the hell up out of here with a win. Instead, it's like what Rico said. That Salah knew. He probably told the team, listen. Josh is going to give us one. He it, He's going to give us one. Just wait. And Josh played right into his hand. And and that's honestly, that's what I call it. Now, you said something earlier, and I need Bobby to chime in on this because he's the old lag guru. Bitch. Yo, is it safe for us to say? <laughs> he knows exactly where I'm going with this. Bitch. Is it safe for us to say, like, Spencer Brown ain't it? Spencer Brown ain't it. Oh, yeah, he's he ain't it. He ain't it. And, and no, I know... Um, Spencer Brown's family is gonna be listening to this probably. You know what I'm saying? He's getting he's getting just trashed all over the place on 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 live, but he's just this is the NFL. Where did where did he go to school? In Northern Iowa. Um <laughs> Yeah. Wherever. You. you know what I'm saying? This ain't Northern Iowa, big fella. This is the NFL. This is the best of the best. <laughs> exactly. You know what I'm saying? You could you could get away with that shit in Northern Iowa. But this is the NFL. You're going against dog, you're going against Jermaine Johnson. They drafted Jermaine Johnson specifically for Josh Allen. I was on a podcast. I don't know if y'all told, told y'all this. I was on a podcast with uh, Richie Mal. Mal I, I don't want to say he's an Italian cat, right? And he's a Jets guy. And we were talking, and he goes, "Let me tell you something, man. We we he had some kind of like event that he went to and was able to get some some intel on the drafting of Jermaine Johnson. And they were salivating over Jermaine Johnson. If you guys remember, I think they traded up for Jermaine Johnson in the first round. I can't remember if recall, yeah. but they said." This is the type of guy that we need to stop Josh Allen specifically. And that's that's what it was. And now you got Spencer Brown. That's a damn liability. And you wonder why, when Pierre put that clip up, why he's seeing ghosts. Potentially, it's because he can't trust his right tackle. His right tackle was absolutely getting owned all night. And, like, yeah. we brought you to be a, a mauler. You know what I'm saying? A guy that gets down there and can, you know I mean, put put your paws on people. But this is a passing league. This is a passing team. So whether it's our fault, meaning the Bills' fault for drafting him and drafting the wrong type of player, or it's on Bean, Bean not realizing, yeah, we got it's it's a passing league, but we went ahead and got ourselves a raid grader, a road grader. So, like, what is it? You know what I mean? Yo, man. I mean, it has to be on Bean on this one. So, yo, Bobby, talk to me on this, man. Spencer Brown, Bobby. bro, what's up with this guy, man? What's the what's the deal? Technically? You know what? I mean, I was actually keeping track on paper how many, uh, like, pressures he allowed. And it got to a point where it was just too much. And I stopped. I stopped <laughs> keeping track. I'll tell you what. I was the guy in the offseason that was like, okay, you know what? Spencer Brown, he was dealing with a back injury last season. I gave him a pass. I even gave him a pass in the offseason a little bit. I did want to draft Dewan Jones, who's looking like an all-pro rookie right tackle. By the way, Yo. that was my guy. 
uh-huh. by the way. Okay. Um, but yeah, you're right on that one. I gave him the pass. I gave him the pass. Like, okay, you know what? Back injury last season. He's gonna come back. I bet you he's gonna be a lot better. Camp comes around, not happen. That's when Bean should have hit the panic button. And he didn't. And he messed up big time. What do they do? They bring in Brandon Shell. Dude retires a day later. What do they do? They bring in Jermaine Effetti, which is hilarious because now on the on the roster, he's listed as a guard. So I don't even know if he's going to be playing tackle. They kept yeah. Alec Anderson. Is he a rookie or one-year player? Whoever the hell that is. He was shitty as hell at right tackle. He's pretty good in on the interior. Alec Anderson. He's pretty good on the interior, but he is not a tackle. We, we don't really have a good replacement. So who the fuck is our right tackle depth? I don't even know. I got to look at our roster. That's why, man. We, we might have to hit up Ty Naseki. Is Ty Naseki available? You have to get up. I mean, he did you all in though. He went all in with Spencer, man. Like all off season, he was making all the excuses for him. You right, know, this and it was that. He was, this was that. Got nightmares. He's got nightmares on Wyatt Teller, the guy I let go, and I can't let another right tackle or one of my linemen get to another team and flourish, and then I fail. So I got to give this guy an opportunity to get his act together. But we tried that with Cordy Ford for crying out loud. We gave yeah, Cordy Ford an opportunity. Ample opportunity. It was, we it was almost like we just gave Spencer the job, though. Right? It's, yeah. Like, you know how they say all offseason, oh, yeah, you know, we're going to have competition at every position. There wasn't a competition at right tackle. It was like, yo, it's your job, and, you know, we'll cross our fingers. <laughs> like, what the heck, man? It's on being on this one. It's on being, 100%. And it's deeper than now, just uh, the roster. Like, look how he's building the roster. Like, he kept Tommy Doyle for all these years. Dude was a fucking bum. That motherfucker has been a bum the day we drafted him. Tommy Doyle always hurt. He hurt, injured. Did he even get cut? Are they still holding on to him after he gets injured every single year? So that hinders the ability to grab more depth at Echo. I'm looking at the, the roster right now. We don't have fucking shit. You have Alec Anderson, who I'm confident to say not a tackle. And you have Jermaine Effetti, who they label as a guard. That's it. Yo, what is Bean doing? And look at last night with Spencer Brown. So we're fucked at right tackle, but that's just <laughs> that's just a part of it. Now that's it is what it is. Now, let's talk about, you know, Bobby's favorite player at middle linebacker. Your boy Terrell Bernard, he did not look good in his first outing, man. 11 tackles. It was bad. Wow, man. Wow. What does coach say after every game? Run fits, run fits. What does a linebacker have to do? He has to come, he has to come over and fill the fucking hole. What happens? Yeah. First series or whatever the fuck it is. Brees Hall goes off. And if what you was look that, at that 30, 30 play, yard run? I was just watching it. It was like he just ran into the line. There was like Brees didn't even get the ball yet. And he just ran into the line. Like, mm-hmm. what? Yo, okay, yeah. I, the, I don't know. The man. next, the next big Brees Hall run, his second big run. Who was it? Terrell Bernard. He got washed out in the line. It, it was totally his gap. He just completely fucked up. But I mean, who's to blame him? The guy didn't even play preseason. Tripping. It's McCarmel's like, guy. Dorian Williams, zero snaps yesterday Ooh. at linebacker. Zero. <laughs> How the fuck could Terrell Bernard play zero preseason? But he's he's more prepared than Dorian Williams. He actually played preseason. I'm, you think Terrell Bernard's in there calling fucking plays at middle linebacker? He's not fucking calling plays yesterday. No, he was calling plays, right? <laughs> Yo, he, he was, was calling, calling plays, plays right? I, he he don't play. know what the fuck he's doing, but he calling plays. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> Yo, that's fucked up, man. You don't know what the fuck you're doing, but you calling plays. Let That's me tell you this philosophy. Let me tell you this. If not for Christian Benford on that on that saving tackle, bro, the Jets would have would have they were they were up. They would have been up. Yeah, but Christian Benford like to save the momentum of the game. Because if yeah. Brees Hall breaks out and scores that touchdown, momentum is all on the Jets side. <clears throat> and at that point, I think it was three nothing, or is it three three? I can't remember at that time. 
oh man, Christian Befford came with his effort and and put a he put us in position to to hold these yeah. guys on and held them to three. It was three nothing Bills. Actually, we held them at three points. We yep. held them to three points. Now this this could be doom and gloom. Now we have to look at the positives because this game was so bad. I'm trying to find the positive in this thing, and there's only one positive I can look at, and that's Stephon Diggs. Stephon yeah, Diggs, balling. bro, he was Steph- balling. And we got to get into this one. I, this is the one I've been waiting to get into. We can we can deny, we can gloss over all the off season hoopla of does he want to be here? Rah rah rise or friction between him and Josh Allen, all that stuff. He probably does mean it that he wants to retire a bill. He also probably does mean it, whether this this statement that came from, I mean, anonymous sources or it's true or not, that he feels that the the opportunity is closing or the window of opportunity is is shrinking, whatever you guys want to call it. I can understand why that statement probably came from it. Because if you look at the performance, if you look at the performance that we put out on the field, if you could see one guy giving 100% effort and wanting to, you know what I'm make sure that he's that guy and keep coming to me, that was Stefan Diggs. Stefan Diggs was there encouraging his quarterback to get his shit together. Stefan Diggs was making plays and going at that number one corner and talking what you got, staring him yo, down. Yo, he was cooking on, yo. Bro, he, did he a was on, on it. He was yeah, prepared. He was. And, yeah. and I bring this up because when you go back and look at that Bengals game, and he's and he's got his arms out extended, saying, "Yo, like get it together. Let's let's get." I don't think that he he feels that the guys on this team match his energy. The guys on the uh, team. No, match. I think I know where you're trying to go. You don't think that he trusts Josh mentally? No, no I I'm not saying he doesn't trust. No? Josh. Okay. I think he trusts Josh all the way. I just don't think that he feels that people understand the gravity of how 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 serious this is. Like, dude, we've gone, we've, we three years in a row, we've made it to the playoffs and we've failed every time. He, I think he genuinely means it when he says, I don't know what else we're supposed to do. Like, like there's something that's keeping us from getting over the hump. And I think what's keeping them from getting over the hump is y'all ain't matching my energy. I'm 30, what is he, 31 now? 30? I think he is. Like, I only got a few, few years left that, that, that I could really be him. And y'all are wasting my time, man. I need y'all to be on my level. Every one of y'all, including Josh Allen. I know he trusts Josh Allen, but his play didn't, didn't dictate that. Josh, listen, Stefan Diggs yesterday went 10 receptions. I, I felt like there were quiet receptions, right? Yeah. He had 10 receptions nonetheless, 100 yards and a touchdown, and off of 13 targets. What a Bro, game. You take Josh Allen, excuse me, you take Stefan Diggs off this team. Where, where do you think we are? Keep everything else the same. But remove Josh Allen, excuse me, Stephon Diggs off this team. Bro, we're not even close to being a competitive team. You look at you look at you look at the next guy up, Gabe Davis, which is supposed to be our number two receiver, two receptions, 32 yards. You know where the, you know where our next best receivers were? And reminiscent of the last Jets game, funny enough, it was Dodge and Cade with four receptions and four targets. And James Cook, four receptions off of six targets. Everybody else, two, three receptions. Unacceptable. Unacceptable. You can't have that. You can't have that. You guys, somebody else has got to step up for crying out loud. You drafted Kincaid in the first round, only four targets. Man, feed that motherfucker the ball, man. God, yeah, but man, I, like, what are we doing? But that's all. Is, is it all Dorsey? Yeah. Is it all Josh? Is it, is it it's all just Josh? Not enough. It's Josh. Chemistry? I don't know. Yeah, Damn, like, something's got to give because Stephon Diggs is going to get so sick and tired of it and he's going to officially say, fuck y'all, trade me. Y'all ain't fucking serious, man. Y'all ain't serious. I love you, Josh. You are my brother. I meant it. But you ain't fucking serious, bro. Like, get it together. Fuck, what is this shit? You got to regress on my ass? I know it's week one, but fuck, man. We've been doing this all fucking off season. We cut the bullshit, man. Step your game up. Golly, man. The one thing that is a silver lining, though. I respect that right there, Rico. Hell yeah, That's man. true-ass point right there. Now, the silver lining in this bitch, Pat Mahomes lost, Joe Burrow lost, <laughs> Josh Allen lost. You know what I'm saying? The big dogs took out, even J- Herbert lost. But this is a new NFL. Like, what you did last year means fuck all. And I, and I, can I, and Pierre, you said it earlier today. You were like, you know what I mean? Uh, you said something to the nature of like, 
We're one of the best teams. We have the best offenses in the game. We're the number two offense in the game. What the fuck does that mean? Did that look like a number two offense to you? Hell no, they look like a number two offense to you. What you did I last think- fucking bull job, man. No, of course, of course. But it's I know like you I knew said, this. God damn, I had to put that out there, man. No, no, facts. No, but the thing about it is like, when I was watching the game, it was at no point that I think we were going to lose this game because we were able to move up and down, you know, for the most part. It was just Josh doing the hero thing. If Josh didn't do any of the hero ball and he just, even if it was, you know, fourth down punt, we win this game easy, big fella. So it's like, that's why it's kind of hard to sit back and be like, oh, yeah, we played bad. Yeah, it looked bad, but Josh Allen played bad. Our defense was, you know, what? We gave up 16 points. Our defense was solid, in my opinion, extremely solid. We had pressure on the quarterback, which I wasn't necessarily expecting, but it's Allen. If Allen didn't do those three plays, we win the game. We win the game. Just stick to the script, dog. Stick to the script. I will say this though, that last drive, you got to give it to Allen and the offense. 100%. You got to give yeah, it to him. He was locked in. Man, I was like, all right, cool. Like, you know what? The, everything could be erased right now. <laughs> everything could be erased right now if we march and we, we put ourselves in position to win this game with no timeouts. It's a, it's That's stressful enough, right? It gets a very good defense in the Jets. And we were we able we were able to move that ball up with thank goodness we had Stefan Diggs for crying out loud. But Tyler freaking bass. Come Yo, on. hey Bobby, hey Bobby, how did you feel as soon as that ball hit the damn goalpost and went in dog? Oh my God. Yeah, I mean, that was crazy. That's that's one of the the positives on Josh Allen is that, you know, he deserves all the criticism, but he did march down that goddamn field put us in field goal range, you know, to tie the game and go to overtime. But the thing I hate the most is the narrative that this game created now, which I know you've seen that Josh Allen is 0-5 in overtime. You remember the narrative last season? What was it? That he can't win close games. That's right. And then as the season went on, that dissipated because he started winning close games. So how many weeks is it going to be, oh, shit, we're going to overtime, automatic <laughs> hell. <laughs> so that, that's shitty that that's the new narrative on Josh Allen. I really don't think that it's fair. It's not. It's really not, right? It is it. I mean, look at the Chiefs game, man. He didn't even have, he have an opportunity to even touch the football. But they, they put that L on him. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's, it's, a, it's yeah. a tough one. Well, you're right, man. You're totally right. But that, and that's the thing. That's why I didn't want to stick too much to, to the negatives because we pick and prod at them all day. To me, Stefan Diggs was a positive. Uh, that last drive from, from obviously Allen and the offense was a positive to put that into overtime. I'm trying to think of any other positives, though. I Yo, can't I think of one more else. negative before we go to the positives real quick. What happened? And I want you guys, <laughs> I want you guys to take on this one. So does, one more Josh Allen, does Josh Allen have a legit fumbling problem? Like, it's legit now, in my opinion. You've been having the same issues with every time you get bumped in the pocket or or whatever, it's like it's coming out. He's been doing it since his rookie season. It's year six now. What, year six, year seven? Year six. No, nah, I don't think so. I think he, he just got, he got, he got, he got popped, man. He got popped. <laughs> but when he, when he grabbed that football and it bobbled a little bit and, and I, I think he was supposed to grab it and then do that whole run to the, you mean to the lineman. I, I go cut that play out completely because now he's got to, he's got to like, Forget. I mean, it's they do it all day, every day. So I mean, it should be natural to him. But when he did recover, and he was like, "All right, fuck it, I gotta just kind of hold on to the ball." He that motherfucker tucked that thing in. Then he got absolutely popped. I mean, six five, two forty. You get popped like that. That ball's coming out. <laughs> that ball's coming out. Yeah. And it's unfortunate because like that was a that was a moment that okay, we got the ball back. Let's let's put these guys away. Let's do what we got to do, and then we just gave it right back. I was like, "Come yeah, on, right back." Right back. So no, nah, I don't think he's got a fumbling issue. I mean, does he fumble? Yes, but does he have an issue of fumbling? And that instant right there, he got popped real good. Like they gave it to him, Clemens or Lemons or whoever hit him, just absolutely let him have it. I know last year I was saying that, you know, our losses were, a lot of them were flukish. Was this a flukish loss in your opinion? 
I don't even know how to explain it. Bobby, I'll let you have this one, man. I don't know what you call this one. Was the loss a fluke? Nah, I don't think you can say that when you have four turnovers. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, I don't I don't think you can say that. Josh Allen turned the ball over. I mean, he deserves all that criticism. Yeah. You can't call that a fluke. I'll I'll give you a fluke. It's also kind of a negative, very Jets Bill specific. How in the hell does every time Zach Wilson plays the Bills, he looks like a fucking Hall of Famer? Yo, he was cooking. What is he beat? He's beaten us like three times already now. No, 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 no. <laughs> what was his stats, Rico? I know you have them up real quick. What happened? Uh, Zach, Zach, Wilson. Zach. Zach yeah. went 14 for 21. Nothing crazy. Kind of like what he did last time. Actually, he had better statistics last game. The last time he played us. He went 14 for 21, a buck 40. About 6.7 yards average, so seven yards a pop, give or take. And that's pretty damn good. Seven yards a pop, you're giving your set, yourself, you're me second and three. You know what I'm saying? So that's giving you great opportunity to to really do some big things on offense. He had one touchdown, one interception. He gave that to interception to Matt Milano, which Matt Milano read perfectly. And even with that damn interception, we still didn't capitalize. Killer. Anyway, took two sacks and had an 81 rating, 81.4 rating, QB rating. And what a and touchdown to Garrett Wilson. a beautiful game man. for him. It is. Yeah. Consider, yeah, considering that is one. That's what I'm saying, because every other game he plays, he looks like a bum. But versus the Bills, I mean, a couple drives, he was he was driving. I mean, no, some numbers is bum like though, right? No. <laughs> I mean, I mean 14 for 21 yeah. for 40. Like, no. And that touchdown was kind of like, I mean, you got Garrett Wilson, big fella. That was a crazy ass touchdown. Yeah, but all right. So yeah, I see your point though. You guys want to talk about statistics. You, you got to think about the last matchup that Josh Allen had against the Jets. They were bum-like as well, right? Both games bum-like. We didn't even get in the end zone. We didn't even get in the end zone. The first matchup we had against the Jets last year, he was Josh Allen running for two, nothing in the air. And in the second game that he went against the Jets, even though we won it, bum-like numbers. But we won the game nonetheless. So the Jets have our number, man. They And it's a divisional game, which is which is... It's supposed to happen. But I'm going to tell you this, man. If we did this against a Jets defense with a Zach Wilson-led offense, what the hell are we going to do week four when we're facing the Miami Dolphins that have a pretty damn good defense on it's their own? It's a different matchup, Rico. I, I'm not going to give you that one, dog. Because, again, we're playing the Jets defense, which is <laughs> dominant. The Dolphins defense looked like the worst defense in football week one. So it's like it's going to be a different type of game. Josh right. Allen might. Go ahead, go ahead. You're right, and I knew you'd say that. That's why I was going to come up with this one, right? I'm, I'm playing the Pierre game. Yeah, yeah, I, I knew you were going to say I that. Like I like it. So you're, you're right. You're playing a Jets defense 100%, but you know damn well defenses change and circumstances change when you got 35 points hung on your ass. You know, you got 25 <laughs> points hung on your ass. This is, obviously, this is also not a Jets offense. This is an explosive offense from the Miami Dolphins. They got up on you quick. Yo, it's a different philosophy. So, like, if we don't get our act together offensively and you have a team that can put points on the board, no problem. Yo, it's going to be a problem, boy. It's going to be a problem. And we got we got the Raiders next week, which we should be able to handle. We should be able to handle. Then we got Washington the week after that. Sam Howell looks like a bum. We should be able to handle that as well. And then we got the Dolphins. Fam. <laughs> These, these, after going on one, the next three weeks are crucial. Rev said this, man. Rev's like, yo, this is kind of like college football. You lose one college football game, it's tough, man. Look, Alabama right now with that big loss, you know, what I'm the other day, too. Who did they play the other day? It was a huge loss. I can't remember. Text. Yo, that, that's a big dipper to Alabama. So this loss to the Jets, although we have what, 18 more weeks of football, whatever. Go ahead. That's a big loss, man. I don't care what the hell y'all say, man. Like, that's a big loss. So we better big get our, loss. Get it, 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 like, it's still week one at the end of the day. Listen, I, I understand the doom and gloom man. aspect. Yeah. I get the doom and gloom aspect. I get it, man. I mean, it's it's every time we lose, it's the same feeling, right? Especially a week one loss. It's like, like, it, 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 like it hit different. But it's still week one at the end of the day. I mean, we've got to keep it in the context. If we didn't give the Jets this win, Josh Allen, it's an easy win in my opinion. I'm watching the game, and I felt good the entire game. There was at no point until the very end, I'm like, wait, what did we just do? 
that I felt that we were going to lose this game. You got to give credit to the Jets, man. That defense is for real. It's for real. They have a yeah. solid. They're able to actually play the perfect style. I need your I need your positives in this game, Bobby. I need your positives. And Pierre, I need your positives. Mm -hmm. I know you said wait, wait, one more negative, one more negative. I need some positives, man. No, no I got we plenty can't, of positives. Can't end this podcast with just talking about all the negatives. I know yeah. we want to get out there, but there's got to be some positives. I mean, I gave you Stefan Diggs as the positive, the alpha male, the alpha athlete on this team, and he kept us alive and he kept us going. Where was the other positives in this one? I'll tell you what. I mean, I agree with Pierre that it's only week one. Um, if you're a fan saying, oh, my God, the Bills suck, Josh Allen sucks, I mean, that's definitely a major overreaction. I was thinking about this before the game. Like, it's not such a bad thing to start the season slow. You don't. I really don't think you want to be playing good football right now. If you're playing good football right now, you tend to have a little layover midseason, and if you're not careful, you could slum at the end. And that's kind of what happened to the Bills last year. We were hot to start. That's a good point. We slumped. Allen kind of got hurt. And we were kind of barely getting by at the end of last season. So it's not terrible. You took the L. You kind of knew we were going to split with the Jets. I hate to say it, but the Jets, that defense, it just does what it does to Allen. But I do have a positive. We're headed into week two. Everything's okay. And Josh Allen, he still has two Achilles. So we're okay. I'm just saying. Hey. I'm just saying. Oh. Now imagine That's being a, a Jets fan right now just in general. Though. <laughs> Lee, I can just imagine that, man. You go through all offseason with all the hype in the world and for it to just end just like that. Sheesh. Hey. But yeah, I mean, it's like, yo, I think there's plenty of positives, man. I think McDermott actually called a pretty good game on defense, in my opinion. Um, yep. Because remember, I mean, we hurt, we hurt Aaron Rodgers doing the same thing we were doing all game. You know, bringing that pressure and boom. Um, as far as the offensive line, I mean, I think I like what I like what Cyrus was doing out there. You know, he was looking like you know he was doing a little something out there. You know, Dion, he had a pretty solid game. I mean, our guy Matt Milano is just him. <laughs> right, it's like dog, the guy's amazing. So I mean, there's, yep. there's plenty of positives. That's now as far as offense, like um, like Rico said, Diggs was just him. But now, like Kincaid, it's like he plays with like a certain aggression that I'm a fan of. You know, like what he showed on film, as far as when he catches it and then he does that quick little. It's like he, yo, okay, I see it, big fella, I see it. So I think there's many a positives, man. I like how Cook played. I like how Cook was targeted as well. But it just came down to that one guy. And it sucks because it's like, yo, I'm a fan of how he plays in general. I've always been a fan of him playing exactly how he plays. But it has to be in the right situation. And it seemed like it was just every time he tried to make those plays, it was at the wrong time. I'm fine with the play. Just not at those times. Uh -huh. Ali. You, you know what the thing is, too, is I think the game plan is is rock solid. And just Allen is the one that deviates from the game plan. That's what it because, is. And what you is. want because he's trying to, like, we would have been praising him if he went for the dagger and got the dagger. All right, put these guys to bed. It's over with. Now we can, you know what I mean? I can dink and dunk all day because we have the room to do it. Well, like, you, you got to stay within the confines of that offense, man. I mean, weren't we up 16-3 at one point? Was yeah. At one point, 16-3? Or no, no, it was 13-3. 13-3, excuse me, yeah, 13-3. It's like, man, like, all right, you're in control, man. So let's just not turn the ball over and just just continue to go with the offense. And sometimes it doesn't have to be about you, Allen. So, and that's sometimes what it is, man. To it's He's making it about himself. And it sounds crazy for me to say that, but, like, it doesn't have to be about you. You don't got to have 400 yards passing this week. Sometimes it's got to be a buck, you know what I'm saying, 200 yards even, and a touchdown. And it's okay because you got the W because that's what matters. But I like what Bobby said with sometimes it's okay to start slow, get the kinks out, and then start to surge near the end. That's exactly what happened to the New York Giants. I think that was a major point. Yeah. The Giants were just not great. They were just like, they were a, they were a 500 team. But they surged at the end and won the damn Super Bowl at the end of it. But like, man, we do not look like a Super Bowl winning team right now. 
there's not a Super Bowl team. But where we have ample opportunity to get better and we got to clean it up. But there was a positive. I like, I mean, we kept the team to 16 points at the end of the day. And then obviously the special teams that happened. Um, yeah. But yo, Bobby, you I, know what? Yeah. A quick, um, like the Bills have never really run a lot of 12 personnel, right? So they're kind of still adjusting with how it's going to look, how it's going to feel. So I think there there is an adjustment period for the offense, even though it might be slight. But they're trying to figure out how to work in both Knox and Kincaid. So that's another thing. I mean, we should have had a little bit more insight to that and not expect so much, I don't think. Fair. Is that fair to yeah. say? I mean, because Dorsey had a lot. Was that Austin awesome Dorsey? Dorsey is some ass. Huh? <laughs> he said Dorsey was some ass. He says, we got to give him a chance. You know what I'm saying? Because Dorsey's some ass, though. He, he's some straight ass. Like, yeah, yeah. So, But I, I will say this, though. There is a point in that where it's a new system-ish, but it's not. We've had Dorsey for four years. What you All you did was added a wrinkle. If you think about it, it's not a whole new playbook and we just had time to, we had time to try to, you know, we get through it. No, no, no. We added a wrinkle. All right, guys. The difference is 12 personnel instead of 13. You know what I'm saying? Excuse me. Instead of 11 personnel. There's 12 personnel. Sorry. Right. Instead of Cole Beasley or Khalil Shakir, it's Kincaid and he can go from in line to split into the slot. That's the only difference, folks. Let's keep it a buck. Let's, let's, you know what I'm saying? So like, I know I want to give him that. But I can't give him that at the same time because I'm like, nah, man, y- y'all should be able. It's football, man. It's football. In line or out, I mean, it's you like, handle it. it's like, like Josh Allen allowed all these questions to still be out there. How he played? Because again, I get, you know, we want to, you know, blame other uh, pieces. I get it. I get it. But Josh Allen allowed us to be this had this conversation. But though, you doing too much. I showed you all these plays. There was guys wide open. Waiting for you, waiting for you. Yet you want to go for the kill when it was unnecessary. Now we're requesting in Dorsey again, requesting in everybody again. And listen, I, I, I mean, I understand why, but it's like, Josh, you didn't have to do what you did. It was unnecessary. Dog. That's I keep on saying that over and over again because it's like that's that's what I'm. You know what I mean? I'm leaning towards that every time. Like it was unnecessary for all the plays that he tried to make. Here's a bright you know, dude. And you're, and you're right. And here's a bright spot, too. I don't think we've had a game where we lose one game and we come back and give another stinker and lose another one. That is true. We usually lose true. the one game and we go back on a little streak to get back on track. We lose one and then we go back on. I can't see us going 0-2 or go with two straight losses. It's very rare that we do that. And I think in McDermott's era, I don't think we've ever lost back-to-back games. So, I don't think so. Yeah, so I can't see. Like, we're gonna bounce back. We know we are. It's just a matter of like all eyes are gonna be on Josh Allen now. All right, how do you bounce back from this? So does he feel that he's gonna need to have a six hundred yard game? I'm exaggerating here, but like a six hundred yard game to say, okay, that was that was an anomaly. What happened last week? I I don't normally do that because I think that's the that's the worst game Josh has ever played. I don't think. I think that's his worst game he's ever played. Would you guys agree, or would you guys say like oh, he's had pretty bad games? He's had pretty bad games. But I this, mean, this, this is a top one for me because giving you give me the ball away four times, like under the circumstances. Yeah, I think it's come down to as far as the situation, the situational turnovers. That's what is. It's like okay, that was your worst game. It's as far as it's pure situation, you know. Because we had the, uh, I think the Patriots game his rookie year or, you know, his second year where he had the four picks, you know, at halftime or whatever it was, or three picks. So I mean, he's had some stinkers. And then, and then we want to harp on Nate Peterman throwing five picks. And then we got Josh Allen turning the ball four times. Come on, guys. <laughs> Give my man a break, man. Give my man Nate Peterman a break. Chill, chill, dog. Nah, chill, chill. <laughs> Peterman! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Bobby. But at the end of the day, man, that's what it comes down to, man. Like, 22-16, it's a, it's a close loss. Close loss. Loss is a loss at the end of the day. Um, And when I looked at the team stats, I was like, okay, so... You know, other than the four turnovers, I mean, Pierre was mentioning it, like, those four turnovers were killer. We won in the time of possession. We won everywhere else. We had had more plays than the Jets did. We had 68 total plays to their 53. Right, Those are the things that stood out to me, right? Um, What was the one that stood out? Third down conversions. 
Did you, did you guys see what the third drive conversion were? No, what is it? We went five for That's 13. Good. They went five for 13. We were even on third down conversion. Okay. Wow. So defensively, okay. like you guys said, uh, McDermott still held it down. And uh, obviously total yards, we beat them in total yards. So, like, we had some 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 advantages in this game. We just didn't capitalize, and those turnovers really killed us, right? Uh, we took turn? five sacks. That was killer. They took three. Um, but five sacks for 19 yards lost. Theirs was three for 23. And uh, the one thing that stood out, too, was uh, yards per pass. We were at 4.7 to their 4.7. I think we need to be way better than that, obviously, uh, with the quarterback that we have. Yeah, I didn't think it was the game plan, though. I What's think that? it was the game plan because we're playing the Jets. It was like, for sure. You got to take one against the team. One for That's probably why I was 4.7. To their one for three in the red zone. Um, and what was the one that stood out to us the most? And I was looking at this. Yards per play, we are 4.6. They were 5.5. Anyway, so the one that, the thing that stood out to me the most was total yards, we had them. We had 68 plays uh, to their 53. And last but not least, the time of possession. 33 to 27. Like, it's it's like we had the ball. We had our opportunities. We didn't capitalize. That's what it comes out to at the end of the day. We didn't capitalize. And we got to capitalize next game because it's a different ball game. Devonta Adams is a different beast. And we're just going to have to really just handle business with that. It really is hard. And then Josh yeah, Jacobs exactly. is another load to handle these as well. So we got our, hand, we got our hands, uh, you know what I'm saying, full. I think to close it out, though, I think we play solid, man. Just that's an overall collective. So, you know, of course, if we just, we have to give credit to the Jets defense. But I think overall we play solid. Matt. Our, our defense was solid. Our offense just as a whole, minus the damn turnovers, it was solid. You know, we were moving up and down the field, like you said. You know, we had more yards. We had more, I mean, pretty much everything. So it's hard for me to think that Josh Allen is going to have a game like this where he's having four turnovers. So it's like, okay, if you don't play like this, I mean, we can be able to stack up these dubs easy in my opinion. You're not wrong, man. And, and I'm a, a two more points I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say, and I want Bobby's points on this too. Actually, the first one is I'm looking at ESP, ESPN and there there was a win probability percentage. I thought this was really dope. <laughs> and it, the score was 3 nothing Bills into what? I think it was the first, second quarter. And with 11 minutes left, the percentage – for Bills to win was at 58%. It jumped to 82% when the score was 10 to 3. And obviously this is with Rodgers out. Yeah. All right. Then it dipped back down to 70 77% and it, it was at its highest peak at 86%. Excuse me. It was at its highest peak at 80 88%, 87%. 87% and it was score was 13-6 and we're in the Fourth quarter at eleven with eleven forty four. Crying out loud, thirteen six in the fourth quarter. Close it out. Get your fours up, right? Get your fours up. Time to close it out. We didn't do it. All right. Here's where it dipped. Obviously, <laughs> I think it was the Zach Wilson scrambles and hits a, a, a hits it over to Rob Bernard and dropped to seventy one percent, and then it dropped considerably. Then it was sixty eight percent for the Jets to win, and that's fourth quarter with four minutes left. At that point, it was all Jets. All Jets, all Jets, all Jets. And it stayed, I think it got to the point where it was like it was a 50-50 when we went into OT, obviously, and then game over from there. So we were dominating this game all the way up to, in terms of win probability, up until the fourth quarter with 11 minutes left. Six minutes left, excuse me. Six minutes left, we had 65% chance to win. And we dropped the ball. Now, last point for me. There's Aaron Rodgers' attempt to make a comeback. Do we, does he make an account at 39 years of age with a ruptured? And I felt it. I saw that thing on screen and I'm sitting there like, yo, something's up. Uh, my wife and I, and uh, my, my man Andrew was like, no, nah, no, nah, he's fine. He's just like straight calf I was like, nah, fam, I've seen this before. I've seen this before. KD, Kobe, even JK Dobbins, and now Aaron Rodgers, there's a calmness when somebody ruptures their Achilles. And I was like, something is ain't, something ain't right. So does Aaron Rodgers attempt to come back? It doesn't make sense to come back after the age 39 with your new team and try to repair and come back and try to be the same player. I don't know. What do y'all you, you think about that one? I'll start with you, Bobby, because I, I need I need Bobby's I need Bobby's take on this one. All right, real quick, going back to win probability. You know what's yeah. hilarious is that they gave us the win probability 
when overtime started. We took oh, it that's back. Right. That's right. At 52%. That's right. Because we, we got the ball first. So that's kind of yep. hilarious. On Aaron Rodgers, um, I don't know. It's tough to say. I mean, it's really weird because Rodgers was – he was kind of running – running uh like in the pocket like he was a little shifty and right before that happened i was like who does this guy think he is he thinks he's michael vick mm-hmm. and when you're f- almost 40 years old you know, people are gonna think i'm an asshole but i mean that that, that thing pop <laughs> it did Yo, i'm Get sorry it, but listen, I, don't, I don't even mean to laugh like it's terrible but you know you was 40 years old and that thing popped that's that's kind of what happened basically i i really think age has something to do with that, but does he come back? Um, probably. Does he bother? Does he bother coming back? I think he's gonna come back one more year. Yeah, I think he's, he's kind of have like to. the ultimate gamer. You have to. Yeah, you kind of have to at this point. It's like, yo, I mean, I I gave up thirty five million. That's the first thing I thought about this morning when I woke up. I was like, yo, he gave up thirty five million for what again? Like, chase four plays, and you out for the, I mean, probably your career. No, but I think he has to come back. I think he. I think it's going to be hard for him to go out like this, right? You know, I mean, he made all this noise about, you know, I, I'm leaving Green Bay. I'm going to the Jets, you know. I think he has to make something happen here. So um, it's going to be hard. I, I mean, you named all those players, like, you know, Kobe, Durant, and all those players. I mean, they all came back, right? I know I know they were younger, but I think he has to come back. Yeah. I want him to come back too, you know what I mean? So do I. And it, I think he does come back um, and – uh he can't go like that. He it's Aaron Rodgers, man. You what you want me? You want me to retire off of this? No, no, no. Yeah, exactly. I'm a let. I'll let Zach Wilson do what he does. I promise you guys, I'll be back. I got money on the table. I like I like I said, like you said, thirty five mil. No, 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 no. I'm I'm recouping that. You know, so I'm coming back. I need to make my money. So I now, are the Jets play. making the playoff? Are, are the Jets still a playoff team now? Does Zach I'm Wilson just, learn yeah. enough? You know, so, from Aaron Rodgers to be able to play like the Jets thought he was going to play. You can see the difference in Zach Wilson last year and to that Zach Wilson this year off of one offseason with Aaron Rodgers. Yes, the Jets are still competitive enough to make that playoff, uh, but we just have to do something about that. We got to do something about that. But, How about uh, you, Bob? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. I knew you were say no. I was like, wait a minute. This, this is the point that I was trying to make, man. Like Zach, William, Zach Wilson, he comes in and he looks pretty good against the Bills. And that's it. These next... Whatever, how many games he's going to look terrible. He's not leading the Jets to the playoffs. Like the Jets are done. That's it. You think that Zach Wilson is going to beat the Dolphins? He not beat the Bills about again. It is like, yo, if the Jets defense he might. is is what everyone's advertising, they're going to be in every game. So it's it's really going to come down is is Zach Wilson able to make those plays late in games to win games? Right of being. Probably did not sleep well last night. I can't imagine him sleeping well, looking at that roster and be like, yo, we got to make some changes. I don't know what kind of conversations he's going to have with, with uh, McDermott. Does the, Do they start looking at Christian Kirksey to say, are you ready to jump in there? Because we didn't like what we saw. Do we want to give Bernard an opportunity to keep calling plays and keep doing it? Is this an anomaly because we face the Jets? There's so many unanswered questions that will probably get answered in the next two to three weeks. Hey, Christian Chris is going to be a big piece to see if they even put him in and see how that works out. Number one. Number two. What about him? Yeah, man. Christian, we got Christian Chris on the sideline. Oh just God, marinating God. right now. I'm just trying to get yeah. things together. So, yeah. And then we have Dory Williams. Zero just snaps. Just a matter of time. I cannot see him going zero snaps next game. I can't see that happening. You got to get that brother on the field. So we will see. We shall see. We got a, There's a whole lot of answers that need to be, uh, to be I mean, put out there. And uh, questions need to be answered. That's uh, that's on McDermott. That's on Sean. And that's certainly on our quarterback, Josh Allen. So we go see. We go find out. And uh, Josh Allen has to play better. At, at the end of the day, it comes down to one guy and one guy only. I don't think I, – I understand we want to put blame, but blame, it has to – we love on our boy a little too much sometimes. You know what I mean? That's but, your way. That's no, your fault. But, again, it's warranted. <laughs> your fault. It's warranted. It's warm. <laughs> your point is games warm. like this where you have to say, "All right, Josh, this is on you, big fella." Bring so, the glass in case of emergency. I mean, he did on that last drive. Long time ago. On that last drive, he did that shit though. You know what I'm saying? But <laughs> hey, 
I'm not worried about week one. Already over it. Bills will bounce back against the Raiders. That's it. Hey, uh, Bobby, what you got rolled in? What you got uh, cooking up for us on IG, baby? Just content 24-7. 24-7. I, I tell you, man. 24-7. I got to give you this compliment because uh, I was on this podcast and these guys, these boys were like, yo, if you guys don't know who the Buffalo Fanatics are, you got to check them out. They're A1 product on t- on Twitter, on X, A1 product on Instagram, like, Whoever's running that thing, like they're the top echelon for content creation on social media platforms. I was like, golly, they just, they just giving to Bobby. And you know what? Well deserved. But this so, warranted, but the thing is warranted. It's heck warranted. yeah, it's warranted because Listen, it, it, it's, it's, it's all the time. It's a leading example of how you. It's do up shit. to Bobby. Yeah, no, I mean, how you Bobby do. is BF at the end of the day. Like Bobby's more BF than than a lot of people don't know, right? Because there's like too much right now. Pierre's doing too much. Let's let's just okay. give me pat on the back. <laughs> No, but it's true, though. It's true. It's true. I mean, I've been wanting to say this shit for a long time. It's just like, yo, a lot of our look is Bobby. <laughs> right. right. Everything that that it looks is on Bobby, man. So right. it's like. And he don't need to show his face. That's what I'm curious about. That's the, that's the mystery of my man, Bobby. You got to show his face. Just look at my content, baby. Look at my content. There you go. And that's all you need to see. But yeah, man, so they were loving everything you're doing, Bob. So <laughs> yo, keep it up. Keep it, Bobby. Keep it up. And uh, listen, the pressure's on now. You mean the, the pressure that's on the Buffalo Bills, the pressure's going to be on. You to duplicate to keep doing what you do, baby. So I had to give you that love, man. But yeah, that's your fault, you, fellas. You got Pierre got these fans feeling break that glass, man. And I'm the one that's gonna keep everybody normal. Bring them back down. Everybody calm down. Hey, just remember who we have. <laughs> Shit. Remember what we did. And remember what we did last <laughs> night. That's what y'all need to remember. Anyway. <laughs> that's it, man. Um, I guess we're gonna do this again, man. Like, listen, this is the vibe right now. This is the vibe right now. And for our listeners, our members that are listening, we appreciate y'all. Uh, this is strictly for the members. This is strictly for the members that have been rocking with BF for a long time. And um, and uh, we appreciate y'all, man. And we going to keep rocking. And as long as you guys keep supporting, we're going to keep putting this good stuff out for y'all. And uh, like the fellas just said, man, we're on to week two. On to week two, on, baby. On the week two, it's the Raiders. Golly, yep. I can't believe we lost this game. But that's all to the Raiders, baby. Let's go.